Good morning, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to talk about a much loved Chanel fragrance for men and it's one that has lost um, a bit of traction in the market these days. Uh, some people look upon it as quite old-fashioned or mature but I look upon it as one of the most fantastic masculine animalic fragrances still on the market and that fragrance is Anteos by Chanel. Anteos was launched in 1981 by Jacques Polge. He's the one who created it. And at, at the time, you know, we were really stepping out of the 70s into that very hard-hitting 80s style fragrance. Um, those powerhouses that we've come to know and love. Anteos definitely takes up position. It resides amongst uh, other greats in that particular class. And um, it's a fragrance which is fabulous. Yes, it has balls bigger than Ben-Hur. It is so masculine, it is so diffusive, it commands attention, but sometimes that's exactly what you need. If you want a fragrance which is going to turn heads, um, you know, people will know when you walk into a room and you'll leave a, a small sort of trail of yourself and their memory, Antaeus is the one to reach for. Now Antaeus obviously references a Greek demigod, one who is half human and half god. So in some ways it has the strength of a god, but it has the heart of a human. It's a great scent. It has myrrh in the top notes. There's sage, coriander, uh, citrus like bergamot, lime and lemon. There's also thyme. So it's got a lovely aromatic lilt in the middle. Uh, there's also jasmine and rose, castorium, which is um, an animal ingredient from beavers, uh, and oak moss, patchouli and labdanum. So a very rich and complex fragrance. You'll either know if you've smelled Antaeus or not. It's a scent which is divisive, only because of its strength and its lasting power. Uh, for me, I had a stepdad that wore this back in the 80s and I loathed him and I loathed the fragrance as a result. But when I met my own dad in my 20s, he was a devout wearer of Antaeus too. And I always used to wrinkle up my nose and um, think, well, it's not for me. But then again, it smelt incredible on my father, and I figured, well, I must have similar skin chemistry to him. So I began wearing it, and as a result, I've fallen in love with it. It's a great fragrance. And you know what? If you want a good sort of masculine animalic, it is a really good reach for. These days, it's being advertised on the Chanel website as a lavender leather fragrance. And yeah, that castorium kind of lends a leathery feel to it. Um, it has been reformulated since the 80s. Um, and here's a hot tip too. If you're looking for a bottle of Anteos or any sort of uh, Chanel which is of vintage um, stock, you need to look for the concentration printed above the Chanel logo, logo on both the bottle and the box. Any sort of um, concentrations that's printed beneath it means it's a more modern formula. I'll put a graphic up here for what you're looking for. Anyhow, Anteos is fantastic. I want to know if you've tried Antaeus or what your thoughts are. There have been a few um, fragrances which have tippy-toed close to Antaeus, but probably with the volume turned right down on that animalic facet. Um, one that jumps to mind is Davidoff Zeno. It kind of has a similar rose, sort of balsamic, slightly leathery vibe to it, but um, not nearly as intense. It did spur on a um, flanker back in the day too, which was Anteus Sport. It's very, very difficult to get your hands on. I have, I think, a 19mm miniature of it, and it's great. Um, but nothing really compares to the first and best, in my opinion. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you think of Anteus, and uh, hit subscribe and share for me. Um, that would be great, and you'll be updated for when I uh, release new material. Thank you for joining me, and we'll talk again soon.